Welcome back to Unqualified and Uneducated. If you are a new listener, this is where we give you our unqualified and uneducated opinion on all things sports, basketball, anime, music, TV, whatever. And if you're returning to the show, you already know what time it is. Trying to get monetized. So today we have a, you know, we'll see how long this episode goes, but we weren't planning on doing it super long. Um, so today is just going to be me and Carl today. What's up, Carl? What's up? It's uh, it's good to be back on this. Uh, it's nice to get a little midweek type session going on. It's cool. That's what that, that's all I was thinking. Like this is kind of the first time that we ever done something in the middle of the week. So what we're going to be talking about today, uh, we're going to be talking about two things, all NBA related. We're going to, first going to be talking about Derrick Rose and his fifty point performance, and you know what? You know it was coming, guys. You guys <laughs> saw the standings. You saw, you saw everything. You know where the Kings are at right now. We're either in the A seed or we're fighting for the A seed. Now, no, this is this is this is November. Playoffs aren't until the spring of next year. But we're just talking about as of right now, the Sacramento Kings are balling. So let's let's talk about. Uh, so what did you? How did you? What did you think about? Der- let's just go. Let's go to Derrick Rose first because I will. Yeah, I, for I, sure, I, for I, we sure. probably spend so much time on the Kings. Let's just go. Let's talk about how did you. What did you think about the Derrick Rose performance? Did you did you did you see it? I didn't see it. All I saw was like I seen somebody. I was like scrolling through Twitter when I was uh, taking care of some business on the uh, the old porcelain throne, you know. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I was I was searching through Twitter and then I seen something that said, "What's better, Clay Thompson's fifty point game or Derrick Rose's fifty point game?" <laughs> and all I could think was. Huh? <laughs> and so then I scrolled through and I saw D Rose had dropped fifty points that night and I was like, Oh my gosh. Yeah, and yeah. I, I started like looking at articles and like saw the video and dude, I honestly, if there's one dude in the entire like NBA that everybody's kind of pulling for that like nobody is against, I think it's D Rose, it to be to, honest. It has Everybody to be. was pulling for this guy. You're right, it has to be. Like I'm, I'm, I'm like you, dude. I, I didn't, I didn't see the game, um, but I was getting texts and messages on Facebook. I was getting everything, all these updates. Like Derrick Rose going off. Derrick Rose going off. Derrick Rose has fifty. I'm like Derrick Rose. I, I know. I was like, and not that I'm like dissing Derrick Rose. Never want to do that. But out of everybody that was having fifty, because Clay just scored fifty this, I think this week too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking. When somebody somebody scoring fifty, I'm like, it's probably one of the Warriors, bro. Like one of the Warriors probably scored fifty, but no, it was our guy Derrick Rose. And, I know. And I'm not gonna lie, man. Every time I watch the watch the like a highlight, they would show more. Like they would show the team mobbing him and like oh, him like tearing know, up. Dude. Oh my god. Then they would they would show him walking to the bench and like tearing up. And then I would see another highlight where he's getting interviewed. And after a while, dude, I just started like. All pretty much tearing up. I was like, man, because Derrick Rose has been through a lot, man, injury wise, and Dude. it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's a good to see. Like LeBron, he came out and said that, uh, uh, you know, it's always, I, I can't remember the quote, but some to the effect that it's always good when a superhero is able to, you know, bounce back, and he's a superhero. And he was, he said, he, I remember he said that even if you don't play basketball. If you don't play sports, you can learn from this. And that's true. Like, Derrick Rose is just that moment. It's that's a big moment. I think it's a huge moment. Yeah, that was that was ridiculous, dude. I, whenever I saw that, it, that, that same part, like, when I started watching more and more and seeing, like, how everyone was, uh, like, hyping him up. And our dude Anthony Tolliver was there. Yeah, him you up. got that. <laughs> but, um, I was just like, yo. Like that's cool, and they they all seemed like they were all just like playing around with it, but you could tell Derrick Rose that dude was like feeling it emotionally, and yeah. I was just like, yeah, man, it's I'm, like there's one NBA player <clears throat> who gets like emotional like that, and it's always D Rose, like whether it been that or that time when Adidas was it Adidas yeah. signed him back, yeah, exactly, uh, and he got so he was like, oh man, I don't deserve this, and he's all crying, and I was like, this dude really just like. This he's like genuine where yeah, he's at. Yeah. He's like genuine for what position he's in right mm-hmm. now in life, and that he can 
throw down 50 points, he, I think it's just like him proving him, proving to himself, like, yeah, I could still play. And it's just like, I don't know, maybe it's like a weight was lifted off his shoulders or something, but that was, exactly. that was awesome. He, I feel like he just appreciates where he is and he appreciates what he has. And it's, it's interesting because, you know, you got to wonder what this does for the Timberwolves as a team. Like, you know, that whole Jimmy Butler situation, you know, yeah. he, we all know he can't do this on a consistent basis. But, I mean, it, it kind of just puts it, puts things into perspective. I mean, if this guy can go out and bounce back from injuries and all like team, like wanting to quit basketball and just being so down emotionally and mentally that he left. I think he left the Knicks and the Cavs. Yeah, that dude was like, he was gone for a minute. He was gone. And <laughs> he was gone. He Nobody was just, knew where he was at. And then he just, he got traded to the Jazz and they just cut him before giving him a chance. And then he goes for 50 on the Jazz. On the oh, Jazz. Like, that's, he, dude, he was working Gobert in the post. <laughs> he had a move. He had a, he had a, he got Gobert with a post move. He brought him, <laughs> he did like kind of like the Rondo, like fake with the go this yeah, way yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the come back like, and score. Towards the end. Yeah, Gobert just yeah. slid on out. He just slid on out of bounds. <laughs> it was like, huh? He said, how she move It was insane. So I was just like, I, I was so happy. And then I watched the video with the, the Timber, I think it was the Timberwolves announcing crew and dude like couldn't enjoy the moment he said he had to say well you know like derrick rose did her he said something like derrick rose did a great job today there are allegations oh i know i know but those allegations weren't they were their allegations because he wasn't convicted of anything and i was just thinking like dude like that that's what f me up bad that, because I, I, honestly i had forgotten about that, which I mean, it's not, I'm not saying no. We need to forget about stuff like that because it, it may have happened, it might not have. Yeah. But like, I was watching that, and on one of the highlights, it was like, it's all good and this and that, and then yeah, they said that it was like, it, yeah. But he has this. It's like, dang, man. It's, that's that's my that was my problem because like this video, you know, I don't know what happened with I don't know what happened that night. The evidence that they put forth, I can't remember it, but I do remember that I felt that everything was kind of sketchy. Yeah. And, you know, he wasn't convicted of anything. And I don't know if he had paid out anybody or anything. But that was like, that was back when he was a Bulls. He was on a Bulls team, right? That was a long time ago. And I just felt like it was kind of like weird and petty to bring that up. Now that moment is always going to be this. Every time somebody watches this 50 point performance video, because, you know, like the announcers, they're a part of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like everybody's going to remember when, uh, I think Mark Greer uh, said "bang" when <laughs> when Ray Allen hit that three, and uh, yeah, 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 everybody's yeah, gonna remember sure. the "bang." Or when Steph Curry was uh, cross, he was playing against the Thunder in a, a, a regular season game, and he crossed the half point. He crossed half court and just shot a three, and he said "bang." <laughs> <laughs> or like you know Jim Ross on the WWF, and he's like, "He's a he's a monster. He's got him on the table." Like everybody, everyone remembers the announcer's moment. So they're going to remember this announcer. They're going to remember this moment. And it's always going to be the moment that they're going to say, this guy's going to be like, oh, you know, Derrick Rose does have those allegations. Yeah, I know. So it's just like, I was just like, man, that sucks. So yeah, I just, <laughs> I just felt like it was a big moment. And then, okay, so I put that, we put that out on the, uh, the Instagram page. Whose who's, uh, performance do you think was more impressive? Steph Curry? I mean, <laughs> Steph Curry. Clay Thompson's? 50 point or Derrick Rose's 50 point? Yeah, yeah. So which one of those are is more impressive to you? Did oh, my choosing? I thought we were just putting it out on the Instagram because I was like, yeah, 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 I'm down, I'm down. It's already up there, bro, bro. <laughs> like, <it's> like, <laughs> I asked you that, you said, yeah. And I was like, huh, I don't know if he knows that's Oh, point. it was up on there. I saw it on Twitter, then I seen it on our Instagram feed. I'm all mixed up. Yeah. Uh, D. Rose, dude, yeah. by far, I could care less about... <laughs> Clay Thompson dropping fifty points, man. Come on. And that's there's no hate. This is all this is all objectable. Oh, it's pure obje hate. <laughs> Any bloke could play on that Warriors team, be a fourth wheel and drop fifty points because that nobody had to guard him because they had to guard three other guys. You right, you right. <laughs> Derrick Rose though, Derrick Rose did that one on one. That's he right. did that against the center. He was doing that every and he dished out. I think he had like 
six assists too. So yeah, Der- Derrick Rose decided to go post up the Eiffel Tower. He posted no. up the Defensive Player of the Year. Exactly. Oh, so, and and he had a game winning block. He did. That's right. I saw that. And I was like, he's doing everything. And yeah. what's Clay Thompson doing? He's just sitting there in corners, jacking yeah. up threes, but no one threes. can catch him. So come on. It's a, so history is going to remember Clay Thompson's fifty point performance more or longer, or whatever, than Derrick Rose because he broke a record, and it was like whatever, how many fourteen of twenty four threes or whatever he hit. But Derrick Rose had the better performance because if I didn't watch the game, I didn't watch either game. But just seeing what Derrick Rose has been through, the comeback story, where he, you know, he was just like, he looked like Derrick Rose MVP year, the way he was doing those jump stops. Although I'm like, man, don't do, don't, don't do another one, man. I, know, I was just waiting for his, uh, and some of those highlights, I was like, damn, his knee's about to give out real quick. Yeah, don't do that. I was just like, don't do it. But he looked like, that was 2011 Derrick Rose. And it's just like, man, what could have been? He's easily... Like besides him or Penny Hardaway is like my my two what is like him. Yeah, there's some there's some like big guys, but D Rose I think for me is the number one like because he dude, won. What could we have had? Well, he won MVP. He had MVP in his third year. That was just he I had to, he wasn't even in his prime yet. He was a kid. That was prime. We're older than Derrick Rose when he won MVP. He isn't was that, a kid. Isn't that crazy? That, and it was amazing. That is crazy. So he, oh man, jeez, man, that's, oh man, I'm just happy for Derrick Rose. I'm glad he had that moment. I feel yeah. like it was a good moment for basketball. It was a good moment for anybody watching. You don't have to get into the allegations. <laughs> like, just enjoy the moment. Yeah. So I pretty much that's pretty much what we had to say on what I got to say on Derrick Rose. You got anything else to say? Derrick Rose's performance was uh, 50 times greater than uh, Clay Thompson's. Yeah, That's my you're argument. You're right. You're right. I mean, Clay Thompson, I mean, it's exciting to see someone shoot threes, but it's the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Derrick Rose was cutting, dropping, stepping, hit, hezzy, return, yeah. reverse, he just, under, I'm pretty up sure he over. just ca- catching, sh- uh, catching shot. Cause oh, yeah, it was all catching shot. Jalen, like, put out that, did you see Jalen Rose put out that one stat where it was like, Something like Derrick Rose took so many dribbles to score that many points where mm. Clay Thompson dribbled the ball like 18 times. Well, for real? And I was like, well, you, th- Derrick, Rose, did nothing. Derrick Rose probably dribbled the ball a thousand times last night. <laughs> Easily. Cause Look, we, I'll find that. I'll find it. And we'll, we'll throw I'll it up. Like, hmm. if you, are you going to look for it right now or you want to just throw it up on Yeah, Instagram? I'll look for it right now and we can just keep going. I'll find it while okay. we're talking. All right. So this other... We, you know, it's coming. You, you, you saw the record books. You were like, "Oh, <laughs> the Kings are two, one and two, whatever." Then they got to two and two. Then they're three and two. Now they're four and two, five and two. No, these boys are six and three. Or <laughs> I was saying two, but like, yeah, they're six and three. Right now. <laughs> they're six and three. Check this out. They're they they beaten. Okay, so the Hawks they beat the Hawks and the Magic. You know, they, those two teams aren't necessarily good. But the Miami Heat, that's the playoff team. The Grizzlies are a tough, you know, they're, they're a tough team. They're not really a playoff team. They could kind of, you know, push the issue this year, but doesn't look like it. But they're a tough team. The Wizards, we smacked them before everyone knew they were trash. That's true. <laughs> that was that before. So true. That was before we knew. They're trash now. But they still have talent on the floor. You see, the thing is, like with the Warriors, I mean, the Wizards, you could say like they're a trash team record record wise, but they still got John Wall and Bradley Bill. So and they got Otto Porter. They got Otto Porter Jr. That's a real team. Yeah, so we so we beat them, and we were competitive against the Pelicans until Miritich just he just went off, and we were in the Jazz game, and then the Nugget. The only there's only two games that got out of hand. It was the Pelicans game because Miritich. Got out, got out of hand. He just got out of control. He did a, he just, he was just, he was doing all, all type of stuff. And the Nuggets, the Nuggets, that game got out of hand just because I think it was, I want to say that was on a back to back, and no excuses, but it's just you know when you're playing up in the, the you're playing up in Denver, it takes you a while to get acclimated to the, to the elevation and the Nuggets they run, we run, so we just got smacked. I'm gonna take that one, but. 
other than those two games, every game that we've played has been competitive. And I feel like I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs, but I'm saying this is a huge step towards the future. Yes, I agree. I'm glad completely. You ag- I'm glad you agree. It was right. so hard for me to figure this. Let me just get this uh, out. I finally found it. Oh, you found the uh, the Derrick Rose uh, dribble? Yeah, Clay yeah Jalen Rose said, for context, D. Rose took a league-high 653 dribbles, scoring his 50. Clay did 56 How points many? for... Or Clay dribbled 56 times for his 52 points. That's a dribble of bas- a point. Yeah. Pretty much. He didn't do squat. You're right. You're right. He probably those are and those pro, those dribbles that he took probably wasn't even predicated towards making a the shot. They were probably when Steph just passing the ball and he had to just dribble hand off to somebody. Yeah, or like <laughs> at the end of the game, he he oh, yeah. had to just dribble oh. out the the game, so he dribbled it forty times. Yeah, he just dribbled out the shot clock. Yeah, <laughs> actually, now that I think about it, he probably did just shoot. <laughs> like, <laughs> he probably just shot the ball and just, just dribbled out a quarter or something like that. Yeah, I think he did. <laughs> all hate, no, no hate there. The hates from whatever man, whatever kings I all got day. Hate. King, I got hate. Kings all day. Let's get back to the Kings. Yeah, back to the Kings. Back to the Kings. Okay, like, so you were saying you don't want to get too hyped. Tell me why you don't want to get too hyped. You know, because every season, every season, man, we go through this. Okay, but usually it is not even the season yet. It's the preseason. Mm -hmm. Or not even the preseason. Actually, it's the draft. It's the draft. Every draft, I get so hype. Like, I get... Dumbass hype. I, that's the only way I could. Uh, that's the only way I could explain it. I hear you. Yep. I get so hyped that I lose all my uh, senses and my ability to reason, and mm-hmm. I think this is the year. We are gonna be clean this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got all these young dudes coming in, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and and we about to tear up this league. We're probably okay. And I I will keep it low. Like we might not make the playoffs, but. We'd probably be sitting around the eighth seed, ninth seed. Mm-hmm. You know, we'd be flirting with it. No, we're not ready yet. We're young. And then the season comes around. We play all these veterans, uh, and we get stomped. Yeah. And we end up barely winning like twenty five games or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know. Yep. And then, now, we start off like real hot, but we're looking nice, so our future looks good. Which is like the main thing I'm holding on to is like, like you were saying, right? Like. Right now we're we're good. We're at like six and three, mm-hmm. but it's like what I see in the future is like oh we're a fast team, which I love that we're a fast team. Mm-hmm. Uh, that like we scored like a hundred and forty eight points or yeah. some crap tonight. You yep. know? Yep. Right. We dropped so many points. It's just like I like to see that we we can get up and down the court fast. Dave Yeager is doing great, uh, but I just I can't get my hopes too far up because I already know there's gonna be like a solid ten game losing streak, and yeah. I'm gonna get so sour. And yeah. so pissed. No, I agree. Like, I, I don't want. I'm not getting my hopes up too high. I think the people that are getting there, the thing is that it's the it's it's the the outlets, the media outlets that are starting to talk about the Kings. They're talking about the Kings. I feel like in a sarcastic manner. Oh yeah, and I know. putting up a, a false sense of hype. Like they're putting up this hype, so when the Kings fall, they can just say, "Well, those are your those are your Kings." But, yeah, but. The thing is, what I'm liking is like the Kings are able to they're able to play defense when needed, and they're able to score when needed. You know, uh, Fox is really you know I feel comfortable when I said he was gonna be my most valuable. Like he was my most uh, improved player. Like I feel like he he's really fighting for that. Him and I guess Zach Levine, you could say. And yeah, I don't. Yeah. You, I feel like you're right. I don't think a rookie can be most improved, but he's. I mean, he's like easily like. One of the top point guards right now, top you know, top fifteen at least. No, he's definitely on another level than he was last year. Oh, yeah, he's it's definitely insane. like he's he's the leader. He yeah. became the leader of the Kings. And like we talked about it, we felt that he was the leader just because he was drafted high. Yeah. Um, last year he didn't get a chance to do that because George Hill was there. But like <sighs> this year, you can it's it's unequivocally he's the leader. There's nobody else. Like Willie's playing a lot better than last year, but Willie's not the leader. This is it's this is Fox team, and it, yeah, it's, Fox, it's team. Fox is running the show. It's his it's his team. We go as far as Fox goes, and you could tell by the way that 
whenever he goes to the bench, like some it just gets a little spooky. It's a it's a little sketchy when he when he goes to the bench. <laughs> like we we just don't move as fast, and it's just we're we're discombobulated. Like no disrespect to to Frank Mason or Yogi Ferrell, but it's just. You know, Fox is our point guard, and usually when he's not at the helm, we the ship starts to go off track a little bit. But I've noticed Frank Mason has been getting a lot better, so I'm happy for that. Who do you like more right now, Frank Mason or Yogi Ferrell? Honestly, I like Frank Mason more just to keep up with the Kings, like keep like <laughs> just to, just to keep like because like there was some there was I forgot I forgot which game I think it was in the Miami game or the Orlando game he was like he played really well. And Yogi Ferrell, he he plays well too. Like it's it's tough, but I just feel like, you know, we got we 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 went and got Yogi Ferrell because we felt like Frank Mason didn't show enough last year. Yeah. But after going, he played with Team USA, um, and because summer league was really bad, he he didn't play well in summer league. But he played with like that Team USA thing that they had going on, and he he came he's he's come back a lot better. So I feel like, you know, as the season goes on, he's gonna prove himself to be you know, even better and more usable and a, a valuable asset to the team. So, yeah, I, I agree. I, I like Yogi Ferrell. It's just that he's just really small, man. They're both so small. That's bro. why. Yeah, that's why I was like, you can really only have that's one of them. It's like, why did you pick up another guard in free agency that's uh, like barely six feet? Yeah, exactly. So it's like that's 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 my problem with Yogi, and I I think I like Frank I like Frank more, so I'd rather rock out with Frank, you know. I yeah, thought, I agree. We we had Frank longer, so yeah. I we got to talk about this though. Bagley is playing really good. I know. <laughs> I'm really enjoying Bagley, and I feel like we both. I don't know if we. I I don't know if we wanted him during that time we were drafting. I remember when I when uh, I think it was it the. The night it was either it was the weekend before or the week before, I was at I was in Clovis and I was at your place. It was the day we shot like the second episode. Yeah, and we were we going were, in on yeah, Bagley. We we spent like the whole like that time I was there just discussing the draft and what we could do with the pick. And you know we we like we found out Mo Bamba didn't want to play with us, so we started dissing him. <laughs> and then we were like, you know, we were going down. We couldn't go Michael Porter Jr. because it's bad back. Bagley was be good, but we didn't know. If, you know, he was the best to pick. And then Jaron Jackson wouldn't, I forget, something, something Jaron Jackson did something. We're like, I don't know. Okay, fine. Let's don't draft him. And we have issues with, like, rookies trying to dictate their future when they should yeah. just get drafted. So we were, we were discussing that. And then, you know, did we both, like, just say maybe Luca was the, was the. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, no, I think, yeah, yeah. I think it was something like that. We both went with. Like Luka Doncic or something like that. Just because to that. off of positional needs, we just yeah. felt that at the time because Harry Giles looks like he still needs some time to get adjusted to the speed of the NBA. Oh but, yeah. But at the time, I felt like Harry Giles would be doing what Bagley's doing right now. We have Willie at center. We we have Bo- Bogey at shooting guard. We have Fox at point guard. We have Buddy coming off the bench. Luka Doncic, I felt like would be perfect right at the three. And looking at this team play right now, I'm like, man, if Luca like, if mm-hmm. Luca was on this team, man, that would be insane. Yeah, it would have been insane. Just, just, I'm not, not, and like I said, like I'm, I'm digging Bagley, and he's a king. I'm rocking with kings, but like I just look at Luca's highlights, and I'm like, man, like that, that fits so perfectly. Because I'm just like, I, in my head, I'm like, imagine a lineup with Fox, uh, Bogdan, Luca, Bajelica. And Willie, like that would be an insane lineup. It's, it's literally a bunch of dudes. I mean, other than Willie, but they can like actually decently handle the ball, mm-hmm. distribute the ball, and like be competent mm-hmm. uh, with the ball, which which would have been amazing. Because you uh, know, Buddy's balling out this year. He's yeah. probably averaging close to twenty points, but sometimes his decision making is. His, yeah, his decision making's always been a little bit iffy. Yeah, it is iffy. You saw like I forgot what game it was. He almost like he didn't almost give the game away, but it was like in like the last few minutes of the game, he was like turning the ball over and stuff, and it was just like weird. And they're just like, "Yo, don't like, buddy, just hold on to the ball." Like sometimes his handle, <laughs> his handle's a little loose sometimes. Yeah, it is. So, but you know, right now, um, I'm really I'm confident in the the Fox Buddy Bogey. 
you know, Bajelica, Willie Colley Stein lineup. And you have you have Marvin Bagley coming off the bench. A lot of people are dissing him so bad because he's coming off the bench. I think it's great for him to come off the bench right now. I do now. too. And he's balling. Like there's games where he's having like nine and eight off the bench and he's four or five. Like, yeah, and it's just good for him to come off the bench so he has to like actually earn his spot. Plus, uh Either way, I want Bajelica to be starting at power forward for us. Yeah, exactly. Right. As of right now, we got Bajelica for at least next year. His third year is uh, not is uh, not guaranteed. It's like we have a team option on him on the third year. So next year, he you know he balls out. You know, it's just I just I didn't know Bajelica was this good. I knew. I, know, I, like, I knew I, you were I, a fan. I've seen him put up <laughs> stats uh, for the Timberwolves, and I've like I was on him. On the Timberwolves solely just because I would call him Bajelica. Yeah. And he'd go up and be like, the boy Bajelica. I remember that. That's the reason why I started calling him Bajelica because of you. And, like, I remember. I, know, I was but like, but I, then, <laughs> like, when you actually see him play, this this dude can play. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't understand how he is not on a. I don't understand how another team didn't pick him up. And yeah, I don't how understand. Does a contender not want something like that? Exactly. I don't understand how he's not on the Timberwolves right now. And we got him on the low. I think we got him like three years, thirty million or something. Like I forgot what we got him for, but we got him on a good deal. And especially those thirty years, not guaranteed. So it's like, how does, how do, I don't understand how he just somebody just lets him go like that. I know he could really do a little bit of everything. Everything he can shoot. Everybody was dissing his defense. Yeah, his defense isn't great, but so far he's been playing, you know, as best as possible. Yeah, he holds his own. It's not yeah. like he's. It's not like he was Buddy Hill in his first when Buddy's first <laughs> yeah. season was as oh. as a king. Oh, that yeah. dude got roasted every game on defense. Oh yeah, every, every, whoa, yeah, that yeah, Buddy Hill on defense his first year <laughs> that was crazy. Like I was just or like, uh, or uh, uh, Nick Nick Stauskas. No, nah, freaking Stauskas, man. Stauskas. Yeah, he's, he's, I think he's playing all right in in, in Portland. Yeah, I, I try not to keep track of him anymore. <laughs> hey, I mean, I feel it. Yeah, he ain't with us. Yeah, against us. Yeah, exactly. So, so like, what do you like? What do you think is the? Where do you think? What do you think we we win thirty games this year? How much did we win last year? I think we won like twenty five. <sighs> That's twenty five. I, mean, I think we could win thirty games. We're pretty close already. <laughs> like I feel like I feel like I want to say I, this team is like a thirty-plus team the way that they're playing because I feel I, like yeah, that I'm sure they they could pull off they could pull out thirty games, but that would that's with keeping everybody like healthy. Yeah, because uh, which check, is which is kind of sad to say. It's like man, we got to keep our team healthy to win thirty games. Mm-hmm. But that's how I feel. You know, that's like winning this thirty games is gonna be like tough because the West is. It's pretty stacked. It's stacked all day. So if they win thirty games, I I don't know. I I find it impressive. No, yeah, I like I like it because we're 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 playing really good right now, and we haven't even Bogey's not back yet. So I know I know Bogey gets better, then Justin Jackson will never have to start again, and <laughs> <laughs> which I hate hating on him because like so, like he'll have a game where he's just not there. He's Kokoro. Right, and then he'll have a game where he he grabs seven, eight rebounds and scores eleven points. I'm like, dude, who, who are you? <laughs> like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, just be this guy all the time. You don't even have to give us that. Yeah, just give us ten points and five rebounds a game. I know that's all we need. Just it's some so like consistent production from him, and he just can't. So, like uh, even like what did he do tonight for us when we scored 146 points? Justin Jackson played 23 minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, he scored six points and had three assists. How many did he have? Six points, three assists. Six points, three assists. I how many rebounds? Like there's it's a, oh, it's a the old goose egg. Oh <laughs> man! Oh man! Ah oh, boy! Yeah, he's got to do. He's got to do better. In the rebounds department. He's got to do better. And I, I got, I, you know, I, I, I realized that. Ben McLemore is the James Jones of the Sacramento Kings. <laughs> he's just going to be there. He's going to give support. He's just going to be the hype man. But he messed up burgers today, man. Him and Skyle, I was so happy to see them get in. 
They killed burgers for us, man. They did. They, I watched that. They were so close. I watched it, and I was so disappointed. They were just letting people <laughs> score. Scott, was, Scott made a couple baskets, and he started getting two free. Same thing with Ben. Ben came in and hit a three off rip. He just got in and Fox passing the ball, and he hit a three. And it was like, Ben was like, I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> and we just, we lost burgers, man. We lost oh, man. it. Man, could you imagine that if we would have been the first team to give to give out burgers, burgers? to someone, the y'all, Sacramento Kings? Y'all know we love burgers. And you think <laughs> you think we wouldn't be hyped up if our team got burgers, man? I would just I would we would do this podcast just on the burgers. We would tell you what parts the bread, the meat, <laughs> the lettuce, the ketchup, the tomatoes. We let you know what quarter that was. What quarter we served? We made the patties, bro. I'm telling y'all right now, if we had burgers during that playoff, it would be, uh, I would have been, that would have been enough for me. That would have been enough. For real, honestly, like, if we were the first team to give out burgers, nobody would expect it. If yeah. we were the first team to get burgered, mm-hmm. everyone wouldn't be surprised. You know, it would just have been amazing if that happened. I don't even think people would know what burgers is, but. Like... No, I know. <laughs> So like, yeah, they still be surprised. <laughs> Freaking Scott Van Pelt. Oh, the Kings. God, Breaking news: They've been burgered. They've been burgered. Obviously, <laughs> of course, they would do that. <laughs> but yeah, like, but you know, giving out burgers, you know, Jeff Van Gundy would be like, mm, oh, oh, bro. that's what they were saying, like at the end of the game when I was watching oh, yeah, they were a talking little bit about of it. it. Those uh, commentators were like all on Van Gundy <laughs> for what he was saying. They, because yeah, Van Gundy was calling the Kings trash and whatever in yeah. the beginning of the season or in the preseason. Uh-huh. And then he's like already going back on his word. Yeah, he said, yeah, he said he was, I think they said that he was like, you know, uh, it's early in the season, but the Kings are a better team, you know. And as of right now, and I agree with him, as of right now, Dave Yeager is the coach of the year. He's coach of the year. Right? As of right, I can't think of anybody that's better. Like as far as the storyline, because co- winning the NBA awards is all about storyline. As of that's right now, with, with the yeah, Kings, yeah, I can't. Most of it's storyline. Even like Russell Westbrook triple double, that was a storyline. James Harden, him winning was a storyline. Whoever has the best storyline, you know, you win an award. And Dave Yeager taking the Kings from a team. From that was expected to win ten games and already has six games. You know, that's true. That's as of, uh, I'm not saying he will win it, but like at, like we're looking at the as of right now, it's either him or what's the coach for the Bucks or even the coach for the Pistons, uh, Dwayne Casey. Could you could say he could win it too? So Dwayne Casey might win back to back coach of the years and then get fired. He might get fired again. <laughs> <laughs> I think, but check this. Oh, ouch! Dang. <laughs> ouch. But yeah, like, but that's funny because like, there was a guy, there was some dude that posted an article. It was super trash. There's a, there's like two trash articles, and I'm waiting for the Kings to win ten games so I can call out that fool. I forgot his name, but he <laughs> he said ten realizations uh, from the start of the season. He said, and then he got to the like he listed his realizations for the season, and he got to the bottom, and he said the Kings will not win more than ten games this year. Oh my god! And I was like, "What? Do you even watch? Like, that's the thing. There's all these people. They don't even watch the games. Um, before we went on, on before we went on our win streak, uh, somebody put out an article that said the Kings need to reset. And I was like, "Reset? Like, yeah, we we are a reset. We are resetting right now. <laughs> this is a reset team. <laughs> like, we'll reset from what? Like, he was saying, <laughs> Kings need to trade everybody, on uh, everybody on the team." for picks he was saying i think he even said like fox is available i was like this dude's out of his mind i was like this is crazy so i'm waiting for the kings to win 10 games so i can start calling people out on our instagram page unqualified and uneducated is going to be known for calling out bs reports Good. <laughs> that's what that's what that's what we're going to be known as that's what that's our claim to frame if you come out with a bs report we're going to call you out I I just uh, when I was like reading articles this morning on because I was reading like sports articles in the morning mm-hmm. there there was one that was like or is it either today or yesterday but it was one about uh, 
like six teams or like six teams who are going to, or three teams that are going to carry on their winning ways and three teams that are going to fall off or you know, like oh. three teams that are doing bad right now, but are going to do good. And three teams that are doing good, uh, they're going to fall off the wagon, you know, mm. like they're playing above what level they're going to play at. And yeah. I was like, Oh my God, here we go. I know for sure the Kings are going to be on this. So I go through it. The first team is not the Kings. The second team is not the Kings. The last team still wasn't the Kings. Really? I was like actually very surprised. You know what it is? That's true. that is surprising. But what it is is because the Kings are starting to have an identity. And, yeah, that's what it is. You're right. And when you have an identity, like how you that's when you have an identity in, in the NBA, you can play through. You know, you can you can when you have an identity, you can play through like a Warriors like barrage of threes because. You're like, okay, we're going to get the ball up, and we're okay. They made a shot, but let's do what we're going to do. You can, when you have an identity, you can, you can go through when the Spurs like to control the tempo, or when the Memphis Grizzlies like to control the tempo, when uh, the OKC Thunder, or um, I can't think of another team, but like when the Thunder, when they want to play rough and they want to make it physical, Rockets made it physical last year in the playoffs. When that happens, you stick to your identity, and you get the ball up fast, you get it up quick. I'm not saying it's the best identity. But for a long time, I say for like, I don't know, forever, since I've been a Kings fan after the, the glory days, the Kings have never had an identity of what they do. And they're finally starting to develop one. And it's, I mean, I guess that's why I think they can keep on winning. Because like from what I, I read an article that said that the Kings are tiring teams out. Yeah, I love that. I love that. When I read that, I was like, dude, I love that. I mean, too. We literally just turned our... Uh, our games into track meets I'm where we're just running as fast as we can. <laughs> I'm down with it. The only thing is, I'm I'm afraid of playing the Warriors, man. That score is gonna be like two hundred. Oh, it's, it's gonna, gonna be bad. like two hundred points to one hundred and fifty. We're gonna score, <laughs> but like they're gonna. Is I'm afraid. I'm afraid. And as the guy, our guys just gotta stay in shape and stay healthy, and we just keep on running because everybody Bagley's built to run. Willie can run with the best of them. Fox yeah, our is, whole team can run. Everybody on our team can run. Even Justin Jackson, <laughs> like he can. Everybody on our team can run. But Jellica can run. Uh, well, for yeah, one, the, one time, Jellica was probably the only one I was like, hmm, I wonder if Bajelica can keep this up. Uh, yeah, yeah, because he's on a tear. But let's just say one time, his name is Bielitsa. Ugh. We say we say Bajelica. That's out of love and respect. Yeah, it is. It's but... out of respect. Bielitsa. Oh, Bielitsa. come on. It's Nema or Mama Bielitsa. I might be saying his name wrong. It's just because <laughs> I'm unqualified and uneducated at the same time. It doesn't turn out. It doesn't have good results. But we love him because he's with the Kings. And yeah, and he's he's putting up for us. It's those Serbian players, bro. I kind of wish Mario Hazonia signed with us. He should have. He should have. We really should have got Mario Hazonja. I would have been down with like, that. I know he's not playing so well in New York, but that's probably because he's not with, you know, he's not with King Vladi, King Serbia himself, Vladi Divac. <laughs> and, you know, uh, it was it was cool because uh, they asked, uh, they asked uh, Jellica, they said, they were like, are you, he was like, or they asked him a question. He was like, I'm glad I came here. Like Sacramento, uh, there's like, because it's a special place in Serbia because the way that uh, he said, because of Peja and, and uh and yeah. Vladi, he said that that people in Serbia like like Sacramento and like the Kings. That's so funny. So I was like, yo, yo, Mar- yeah, Mario Zonia need to get his butt over here because he'd probably like ball out. Like we just need to make our team a national Serbia, the Serbian That's team. That's so true. We just need to get him. And I don't think I don't think uh, Luka Doncic is Serbian, but just come on down, bro. And, Close and, enough. Request a trade. Say you'll only play for the Kings. We'll probably win a championship. You Fox. Marvin Bagley, we'll, we'll 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 make it happen. We'll make it happen. Just come to the Kings. It, that, we're, we are gonna we're gonna get you on the team. We're gonna get Mario Hazonia, um, Dragon Bender. I think he might need to pull up. He we're the he, he needs to. <laughs> then he can sign back. That's for sure. We're the birth. We're we're the place where you come and you restore your career, but you end up liking it and you will stay. That's what Ben Mac thinks he's doing right That's now. That's what Ben Mac does, man. But he's <laughs> he whapped that three. He said, "I'm bad." <laughs> I respect him because he's actually like he actually like gets up and cheers for the team, and like celebrates with them. Like if he was on the bench being a little Debbie Downer, I would be like, "Man, we got to get him out of here." But he's actually like <laughs> he's participating, and I respect him for it. Hey, I'm always gonna pull for my uh, for the pizza guy. No, Ben Mac more pizza guy. <laughs> 
I'm Ben Mahmoud. I, I'm Ben. I'm Ben Mahmoud. I'm a pizza guy. I'm pe- you pizza guy. I'm pizza guy. <laughs> Are you Ben Mahmoud? <laughs> I'm sorry, Ben. It just felt like you're, you're you just read straight from a script, and the only your only job in that commercial was to grab the tall the pizza That's boxes. Right. There's like a pizza box that they decided to put on these shelves that nobody in their right mind could reach. <laughs> They're like Ben Macmore, go grab that. Yeah, he said, "I'm pizza guy. I'll get Ben Macmore. I'm pizza guy. I'll grab pizza box." And we saw you at IHOP, and you showed no love, so you get yeah, no man. love. You showed no love, man. It no was, love, just it was, aggression. It was aggression and then a lot of disrespect, if you ask me. Mm-hmm. So, eh, what are you going to do? Like, honestly, I feel like we could talk about the Kings all day. I could, We could talk so much more about them. Oh, I know. I um, know. But I, I promised Carl we wouldn't be on too long. It's about <laughs> 30 to yeah, 30 I gotta- to I gotta get some Z's. It's Thirty to forty-five, you know. We just wanted, we just wanted to give an update on the Kings. Just talk about how we're feeling. Uh, talk a little bit about Derrick Rose. Uh, I think we're gonna, we might have an episode coming out on Sunday this weekend. Yeah, for sure. I'd, I'd be down with that. I also, I like these little, and we do quick little midweek ones like this. I think where we need we can to keep talk doing about this. like more uh, focused topics. That'd be yeah. I think we need to do good. this. Like when something big happens, we're gonna start putting out these little emergency pods 30 they're gonna be around 30 minutes long this one's gonna be about 45 because we kind of just rambled on but about about 30 minutes about 30 minutes long so all right man it was good talking to you this this uh early in the week man i know it was good it was fun (laughs) our boy d rose i know oh my god I'm, i'm probably gonna be hyped on that for a solid month just like bro he <laughs> rose scored 50 and that dude got so emotional like it's just that just gets me so hyped it was the emotion man it was just like i was started tearing up man that was dang it was good stuff good stuff good stuff good good this was a good podcast good whoa, kings dude whoa take it easy <laughs> good kings good dare rose good 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 good, 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 good stuff man <laughs> <laughs> all right man uh you got anything else you want to say uh no just uh Shout out to Derrick Rose because, man, everybody in the world's written for you. I, I hope so. Yeah, I'm, All right. everybody everybody on this stand is rooting for you as well. Shout out Derrick Rose. Shout out to the Kings. De'Aaron Fox, shout out to Fox for that triple W you had tonight. Oh, that's real. That's real. I forgot triple about that. Double triple double through three quarters. <laughs> he only paid three quarters, I think. Are you sure? Mm, maybe not. Maybe they put him in the fourth, but he really, no, he played in the fourth quarter, but he got the triple double after he got him through three quarters. He didn't need to play, but our boys, Ben and Skye on them, them, them boys, they kind of, the goon squad kind of like roughed up the game. The goon squad. The bench, the bench, everybody knows the bench for the Sacramento Kings called the goon squad. The goon squad. And the goonie squad was kind of goonie squading it up. So he had to put Fox back in. But no, shout out to the everybody on the team, y'all. Willie, thanks for consistently showing up. Bagley, thanks for being the stud that you are. Second round pick, you look like a second. I mean, <laughs> the second overall pick. You look like the second you look overall like a pick. Second round pick. <laughs> no, you look like the second overall pick. And I see that. I, I see that three point shot dropping, bro. Don't act like we don't notice. We see it. But like, uh, see, I must. We gotta stop. We gotta stop. Yeah, we yeah, can yeah. talk about Bagley's right hand, and when he gets the right hand, we're gonna be unstoppable. We can talk about that later. But we'll talk about that for two hours if that, he gets yeah, to our hand. That, that's different. That'll be a whole. That's a two-hour special. Because right now, Bagley's only playing at 50%. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Remember, if good things are happening in the middle of the week, just accept them and take them for they are because they might not be so good next week. And we are out. What the hell? I don't know, bro. I just be saying stuff.